Good morning. Good morning. Let's take our places and open our hearts and minds to God's Holy Spirit. If you're a guest, we would like to say welcome. We're glad you've joined us today and hope you find peace and joy during worship. Please find the brightly colored paper in the small red folder in the hymnal rack and take a moment to complete that form. Please place them in the offering container during that time of our service. <clears throat> also, if anyone has a prayer request or suggestion for visitation, please use the other portion of that same brightly colored paper and hand them to our ushers during the prayers of the people. Do we have any anniversaries this week? Do we have any birthdays this week? That's a happy birthday. God bless. 18, that's a good birthday. Any others? All right. Um, please turn to the announcements in the bulletin, and I will try to uh, read what we have here. The flowers are placed in the sanctuary this morning in loving memory of Marvin and Polly Fink by their family. There will be a prayer meeting, Montelia prayer meeting Wednesday at 6. Um, there will be a Fields of Faith Wednesday, 6.30 p.m. at a Apache Stadium, Paul. We will have a, a former NFL player uh, speaking to us. The event begins at 6 30, and we're hoping to uh, present the gospel to a whole bunch of high school students. High school was around that area. Paul, should we not have the prayer meeting on Thursday? If we have enough that want to go to the uh, 6 30 thing, what we'll do is we'll meet here and head in. Um. Nominations is October, a nominations meeting October 18th, 6 p.m. Administra Administrative Council, October 19th, 7 p.m. And then the church conference will be October 30th at the Gonzales FUMC. And then um, any other announcements on that? Oh, yeah, Brotherhood, Brotherhood tomorrow night at 7 up here. Brotherhood at 7. Sir? Monday. Tomorrow night. Right, Greg? That's what we decided on the other day. And then I've got a couple of, um, I have a card here. I don't know uh, who put this up here, but I'll read it. It says, Dear Church Family, thank you so much for the gift. For my classroom, I will be using it to purchase some alternative teacher supplies. Alternative <laughs> seating. Seating? And fidgets? Fidgets? <laughs> alternative seating and fidgets and rewards for my students. And that comes from, it says, love from Kayla Otto. And then there's another one. It says, uh, Dear Montelia Methodist Church, thank you all so much for the $170 gift card. In the eyes of a teacher, this is the equivalent to finding a pot of gold or winning the Mega Millions jackpot. <laughs> it is so comforting to know that <clears throat> us teachers have support from the Montelia community, and it is a blessing for us to be in y'all's prayers. Being a teacher these days is truly hard work, but I know that God put these children in my life for many reasons. I am so thankful God chose me to be an educator. I plan on using this gift card for things some of my students need, school supplies and community supplies as well, slash tissues, it says. You, sh you would not believe how many boxes of tissues we go through in a week. I believe we have set a world record. <laughs> Once again, thank you all so much for the money. It will be used wisely. Sincerely, Alex Finch. And 
And that's all I have in the way of um, announcements. I think Greg, oh, one more? Where? Oh, this? Oh. If you're in support of repairing the H4 and H5 dams to lessen flooding along the Guadalupe River, please take a form from the back black binder in the foyer. Please complete the form and return to Lou Full of Love today or to Christy Full of Love at Burchard Abstract and Title Company in Gonzales. You may make copies and distribute to others. Support of repairing the dams. And Greg has an Good morning to everybody. Um, as everybody is pretty much aware of, we cast a vote here a couple of weeks ago to make the decision to remove ourselves from the United Methodist Church. Uh, so we're in the process now of working that. This last week, we sent the letter to the conference stating that we were going to go into a time of discernment or it's, it's a thinking time that lasts till about April the 1st, the best I understand it. Um, to do this, we have to go and have three listening sessions, three listening sessions with the district superintendent. What I need to do right after church is have a administrative, called administrative board meeting real quick. We're going to set the chair for that committee and start the process. And what I would like to encourage is on the 19th, we do have board. If you are on the administrative council, if there was ever a time need to attend, now will be the time. Um, I've said this before in administrative council, there's many times that we meet and we have 30 people on the committee and 15 show up. So that means that 15 people of this church make decisions for this church. I don't want to be, I hate to be harsh about this, but with nominations coming up that Tom spoke about. Um, if you're not able to be on administrative council, don't take the nomination. We need people to come to board that are willing, and, and, and board is hard sometimes. There's some bad, there's some hard decisions. Sometimes there's some, sometimes get heated. Sometimes it gets controversial, but we need people to be there. But this decision about leaving the church is probably will be the single biggest decision made in my lifetime and probably made in anyone in this room's lifetime concerning our church. Um, it, it's just a huge deal. And there's a lot of a lot of Methodist churches, a lot of United Methodist churches that agree with us. So, like I said, real quick, right after church, it shouldn't take but a few minutes. We'll meet right over there. Administrative Council. Thank you. It is now for time for our morning prayer. Will you all pray with me? Most gracious Heavenly Father, it is such a privilege and honor to be in your house today to give you thanks and praise for all you do for us in our everyday lives. Be with Paul as he brings us your message this morning. Lead, guide, and direct us in everything that we do in this cup and coming week. Help us be better Christians to our fellow man Lord, there's one thing real pressing on my part. We need to get our country back to where it's one nation under God, indivisible with liberty and justice for all. Lord, we need your help. In your precious son's name, amen.
please stand for the call to worship. Bless our God, O peoples, let the sound of his praise be heard, who has kept us among the living and has not let our feet slip. Come and hear all you. Tell you what he has done for me. Remain standing for the hymn of praise, precious name, found on found on page one uh, five thirty six. of heaven.
Let's try again. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. That's a little better. Okay. How are y'all this morning? Good. I'm so glad. Okay. So I brought my Bible and this. What is this? It is a pen with a highlighter on it. What is the purpose of a highlighter? To make something more bright. Ella, what do you what do you use the highlighter for? To color and draw. What do I use a highlighter on most of the time? Book. My book. What kind of book do I use a highlighter Bible. on? My Bible. Why do you think I use a highlighter in my Bible? Because it shows up. Because it shows up. A highlighter is kind of like a light for the page. You highlight something that you want to stand out. Kind of like when you walk into a dark room, what do you turn on? A light. Why do you turn on a light? It's dark. So you can see. So you can see, so I'm going to read a scripture out of Psalms, and it says, Your word is a lamp to guide my feet and a light for my path. What word? Your word. Whose word do you think we're talking about? Jesus. We're talking about God's word. We're talking about what Jesus tells us in the Bible. So we use a highlighter to highlight things in the Bible that God wants us to remember. And I'm going to read you another scripture. It says, I have hidden your word in my heart that I might not sin against you. No matter how you're feeling, if you're mad, if you're sad, if you're angry, if you're joyful, if you're disappointed, there is something in the Bible that can encourage you. There are words in the Bible that can encourage you no matter how you're feeling. And when you highlight words and when you memorize scripture, that means you're always going to have it with you in your heart and in your mind. So say you're at school and you're feeling really angry and maybe you can't pull out your Bible and find a scripture, but if you have something memorized, then you can always turn to God's word. So I know this week, my girls, we're going to be working on memorizing a scripture together. And that way you're always going to have God's word in your heart and you can always use it no matter where you are, no matter how you're feeling. Okay. Okay. Let's say a prayer. Come your way. Oh, thanks. Okay, Avery, do you want to say a prayer for us? No? Ella, do you? Okay, I'll do it. Dear Lord, thank you for these, the blessing of these children. Thank you, God, for the pri privilege of getting to raise them in a church. Lord, help us to remember that the Bible guides us on every emotion we can imagine. And if we store your word in our hearts, we will always have it with us no matter where we are, God. And there is... There's no better advice to take than the advice that comes from your word. So help us, Lord, to be more aware of memorizing your scripture and knowing your word so we always have it with us. In your name we pray. Amen. 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 Please stand for the prayer for illumination found in the bulletin. Lord, open our hearts and minds by the power of your Holy Spirit, that as the scriptures are read and your word proclaimed, we may hear with joy what you say to us today. Amen. Our first scripture this morning comes to us from the uh, Old Testament, I believe. Is that right? Yeah. Jeremiah, chapter 29. Verses 1, and then skipping down to verses 4 through 7. These are the words of the letter that the prophet Jeremiah sent from Jerusalem to the remaining elders among the exiles, and to the priests, the prophets, and all the people whom Nebuchadnezzar had taken into exile from Jerusalem to Babylon. Then down to verse 4. Thus says the Lord of hosts, the God of Israel, to all the exiles whom I have sent into exile from Jerusalem to Babylon. Build houses and live in them. Plant gardens and eat what they produce. Take wives and have sons and daughters. Take wives for your sons. Give your daughters in marriage that they may bear sons and daughters. Multiply there and do not decrease. But seek the welfare of the city where I have sent you into exile. 
and pray to the Lord on its behalf, for in its welfare you will find your welfare. This is the word of God. Thanks be to God. Be to God. Amen. Amen. Please be seated. Our second scripture this morning comes from the second letter to Timothy, the uh, second chapter, there we go, verses 8 through 15. The reading comes, and excuse me, the reading says these things. Remember Jesus Christ, raised from the dead. A descendant of David, this is my gospel, for which I suffer hardship even to the point of being chained like a criminal. But the word of God is not chained. Therefore I endure everything for the sake of the elect, that they may also obtain the salvation that is in Christ Jesus with eternal glory. The saying is sure. If we have died with him, we will also live with him. If we endure, we will also reign with him. If we deny him, he will deny us. If we are faithless, he remains faithful, for he cannot deny himself. Remind them of this and warn them before God that they are to avoid wrangling over words which does no good, but only ruins those who are listening. Do your best to present yourself to God as one approved by him, a worker who has no need to be ashamed, rightly explaining the word of truth. This is the, uh, the word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. Amen. Amen. This morning, I wanted to remind us Of the same thing that Paul is reminding Timothy. Remember Jesus Christ. I don't know how it is at your house. But I'm willing to bet. If I were going to bet. I'm willing to uh, believe. That in your house. There are sometimes wrangling over words. There are sometimes drama going on. There are sometimes difficulties that happen. In your life, in your life, outside your home, with extended family, with acquaintances, with strangers you meet at the grocery store or in line someplace, stoplight in a large city and they're holding a sign, but you still have some dealing with them. Sometimes, sometimes life presents us challenges, difficulties, right? And sometimes those things are, are things that we have planned. We, we knew we were going to get into a conversation with a particular person, or we knew that we were going to have that person almost certainly bring up a conversation that we were hoping to avoid. And sometimes they're serendipitous. They're, they're surprised. They're something that just happens along the way. I'm going to ask a question. And, and this one's not just rhetorical. I want you to at least nod your head if if you've ever been in a conversation with someone and you were talking to them about your faith and they weren't sure that Jesus ever really existed. I've, I've been there. I, I also want to ask you if you've ever been in one of those conversations where the person that you were talking with that wasn't sure about the Christian faith says, well, we know that Jesus was a a true historical person. But, you know, he was a good teacher back 2,000 years or so ago, but, but he's on the same level as some of the other prophets, Muhammad, 
Buddha and some of those. I, I've been in those conversations. Anybody else been in some of those? One more. Have you ever been in one of those conversations with somebody who knows that Jesus existed, that he was a historical figure, that he was a teacher beyond Buddha, beyond Mohammed, beyond any other. But they really had their doubts about this myth of, of Jesus Christ being born of a virgin. Because that doesn't happen. They had this their doubts about Jesus Christ doing these miracles because those things are just fairy tales. They believe that Jesus, the historical Jesus, was indeed crucified and died upon a cross. That he died and was put away in the grave. But Lord help us if you believe such silly fables as that the stone rolled away and Jesus came out alive and risen after three days. Anybody else been in that conversation? I've been in all those. And unfortunately, <coughs> sometimes, not all the time, praise God, but sometimes those aren't with somebody that doesn't sit in a pew anywhere. They're not even with somebody that does sit in a pew somewhere. They're with the person that's leading the people sitting in a pew, the pastors. I have a tough, tough time understanding how you would get to be a pastor of a Christian church if you don't believe in Christianity, if you just think it's a set of rules or, or something along the way that helps people live and go along, you know, Thou shalt not murder. Gosh, that seems like a pretty general thing, right? Probably good not to do that, whether you're Christian or not. Yeah, I agree with that. But Christianity goes a lot deeper than just the rules. It goes a lot deeper than the, the safety rails along life's path to hold us in. Christianity is not a religion where humans are trying to reunite with God, it is a relationship with Jesus Christ, God come down to earth in the flesh, and God who has come and become one of us, tempted by every known temptation ever will be, and overcome it all, died on the cross, a sacrificial death for our sins, the sins of the world, so that everyone who believes by grace through faith comes to Christ and can come in to heaven. That Jesus Christ, that God who bridged the gap, who came to us to make it possible for us to come to him, that God is the God of Christianity. That's what Jesus is about. That's why we call Jesus our Redeemer. He has made us worthwhile again. In the sight of God, our sins are banished. And we stand before God whole and clean and pure. This morning, I want to remind us that that Redeemer, that Savior, that Lord of Lords, Jesus the Christ, He's the one we worship. He's the one we believe in. He's the one we follow. He's the one that we know personally. And let us be the ones who live our lives just as, as Paul is telling Timothy to remember Jesus Christ. For when we get in those, as a pastor friend of mine says, an intense moment of fellowship with our family, our acquaintances, or a stranger, 
when we get into those moments, let us remember Jesus Christ. Not only for how, oh Lord, if you're on social media, please remember Jesus Christ. It's so, so easy to get lost in the battle, to get heated. Let us remember Jesus Christ who cares for us, who loves us, and who cares for the one with whom we are having this intense moment of fellowship. For people don't come to Jesus. They don't come to belief. They don't come to God. They don't come to the Holy Spirit because we have some better logic or a louder voice. Okay, maybe on better logic, but that's pretty few. People come to Jesus Christ because they see in his disciples, they hear in his voice, they know in his presence that there is something beyond what they fully understand. And in that, they say, I want not only to understand, but to be part of that. This morning, let us remember Jesus Christ. As we go through this transition process, as we go through the everyday living of life, as we go home to our places where there, there is struggle and difficulty sometimes and there is sometimes great joy, let us remember Jesus Christ for He is our Savior. He is our Redeemer. He is the one who has given us hope. Jesus is the one who has given us reason. Jesus is the one who has flung open the gates of heaven that all may come. This morning, let us remember Jesus Christ. Not just for those that we argue with, although that's very important. But even more important is remember Jesus Christ, for this is my gospel. And it is important to us. For we fail and we flounder when we forget Jesus Christ. Let us be the people who remember Jesus Christ. Amen. Please stand for the hymn of response found on page 389, Freely, Freely.
would you please join me in the Apostles' Creed, the affirmation of faith. I believe in God the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, dead, and was buried. The third day he rose from the dead, he ascended into heaven, and sitteth at the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From thence he shall come to judge the quick and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sin, the resurrection of the body, and life everlasting. It's a girl, Bellamy Ryan Vicera, 7 pounds, 11 ounces, born 10, 4 of 22. That is a joy. Uh, born to Alyssa and Ethan and a very happy family. This will be added be in, in prayer for the Vicera family for the next several weeks as we go through our prayers that will be added to the list of those we have. And we want to tell you that uh, I encourage you to take the, the bulletins home with you. There's a, a list in purple at the end of the bulletin that's our, all of our prayer requests. Some of them are joys. Some of them are very concerning. And I'd, I'd encourage you to take that, put it somewhere that you see it regularly, and pray over those things. You won't know everyone, I know. I, 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 that's okay. God knows everyone. And we can be in prayer for them, whether we know them or not. It's, it's nicer and easier if we know them and know the situation. But God knows the situation regardless. Let's go to the Lord in Gracious Lord, we come before you so grateful for your life in our lives, for your joy which bubbles up within us from your spirit, for your hope which gives us momentum in life and reason to move forward. Lord, we pray for those who don't know you. Pray, Lord, for those who do know you, but still do not trust, do not come into your presence because they have not made that commitment to you to say, yes, Lord, you are mine and I am yours. And Lord, we give you thanks for the successful C-section, the young girl, Bellamy Ryan, and her family. the Becerra family that she's born to. Lord, we give you thanks for this congregation, and we ask your blessing as well, Lord, upon those in particular, whether this congregation or elsewhere, who are born this month. As we pray each month for those who are born during that month, Lord, we, we pray blessings upon those born this month. 
that when they are in trouble, they may turn to you, that when they are in joy, they may recognize you singing and dancing beside them. And Lord, we pray that in all things, they come into your presence and bring you into their hearts. For it is in Christ's holy name we now pray the prayer which Jesus, our Redeemer, has taught us how to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread. Forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory forever. Amen. As a forgiven and reconciled people of people of faith and of practice, one of the ways in which we offer ourselves to God, one of the ways in which we worship, is through our morning offering. If the ushers would come forward at this time. Gracious Lord, give you thanks for this day. Give you thanks, Lord, for joyful givers who give sacrificially to you, to your kingdom. And Lord, we ask your blessings upon them, upon wherever this money is used in, in your name, that it may be a blessing. In Christ's name we pray. Amen. <laughs> Remain standing for the hymn of dedication found on page 175, Jesus, the very thought of thee.
hand sanitizer on and holding hands with somebody around you making a circle. To receive the benediction. Go forth in the glorious name of God, the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Go forth in the love of Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. And go forth in service to God, the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. Amen.